All right, in this lesson, we're going to kind of continue our last discussion talking about the layers of the sun. We're going to take a look at more of the solar features and some of those layers in greater detail. When we're done with this lesson, you should be able to identify some of the key features in solar events. The solar interior is separated into regions by different processes that occur there. Energy is generated in the core, the innermost 25%. This energy diffuses outward by radiation, mostly gamma rays and x-rays through the radiative zone. And by convective fluids, which are kind of a boiling motion, through the convection zone, which is the outermost 30%. There's also a thin interference layer between the radiative zone and the convection zone. And this is where we think the sun's magnetic field is generated. Next up is the photosphere, photo or light layer, the visible surface of the sun that we are most familiar with. Since the sun is a ball of gas or ball of plasma, this is not a solid surface. It's actually a layer of about 100 kilometers thick, which is quite a bit, but compared to the rest of the sun, which is 700,000 kilometers in radius, it's a relatively thin layer. When we look at the center of the disk of the sun, we see we look straight in and see somewhat hotter and brighter regions. When we look at the limb or edge, uh, it looks darker because that light is taking a slanting path through this layer. And so we only see the upper cooler and dimmer regions. This explains that limb darkening that appears as a darkening of the solar disk near that limb. A number of features can be observed in the photosphere with a simple telescope, along with a good filter to reduce the intensity of the sunlight to safe levels. Never ever look at a sunlight, or I'm sorry, at sunlight and the sun itself um, without some type of uh, special filters. Okay. You can do some serious damage to your eyes, even if it doesn't feel painful, you can really do some damage to your eyes by staring at it. All right, in the photosphere, some of its features include sunspots, uh, feculi, forgive my pronunciation there, and granules. Sunspots, probably the most famous of these, are going to be the cooler, darker areas on the surface of the sun. The reason they appear dark is because they're relatively cooler. They're still 3,700 degrees Kelvin, but that's cooler compared to 5,700 degrees Kelvin. Um, they can last for many days or even for several weeks. These sunspots are often magnetic regions on the sun with strong magnetic fields many thousands times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. Um, there are also features called faculi. These are, uh, these are just bright areas seen mostly near the edge of the solar disk, also associated with magnetic areas and magnetic fields. Granules are small, relatively, about a thousand kilometers across. Um, uh, cell-like features that cover the entire surface of the sun except for those areas covered by sunspots. These features are the tops of those convection cells where the hot fluid rises up from the interior in the bright areas then spreads out across the surface cooling and sinking downward along those dark lanes or dark lines. They can last anywhere um, or in, I'm sorry individual granules can last uh, for only about 20 minutes the pattern is always shifting and changing as new ones emerge. The flow, one interesting fact is the flow within the granules can actually reach supersonic speeds, uh, seven kilometers per second, which is roughly 15,000 miles per hour and actually produces sonic booms and other noises that generate waves on the sun's surface. The chromosphere is an irregular color layer of the sun uh, where the temperature rises from 6,000 to about 20,000 degrees Celsius. At these higher temperatures, hydrogen actually gives off a light of reddish color, H-alpha emission. This colorful emission can be seen in prominences that, are, that project above the limb of the sun during a total solar eclipse. This is what gives the chromosphere its name, the color sphere. 
when the sun is viewed through special filters that actually isolate the L H alpha emission, all sorts of new things can be seen, including a chromospheric network um, that includes uh, blaze around sunspots and dark filaments across the disk and prominences above the limb. Prominences are dense clouds of material suspended above the surface of the sun by loops of magnetic field. Prominences and filaments are actually the same thing, except that prominences are seen projecting out above the limb or edge of the sun. Both filaments and prominences can remain in, in quiet uh, periods for days or even weeks. However, as the magnetic loops that support them slowly change, filaments and prominence can erupt and rise off from the sun over the course of a few minutes or hours. Uh, to give you an idea of just how big the, these prominences can be, here is the size of the Earth, about the size of this dot. So you could fit many, many Earths inside of this loop of uh, the sun here, uh, a literally a ring of fire. Solar flares are another intense burst of radiation that come from the release of magnetic energy on the sun's surface. They're associated with sunspots. Flares are the solar systems are the solar system's largest explosive events. They are seen as bright areas on the sun and can last from minutes to hours. We typically see a solar flare by the photons or light that it releases at almost every wavelength of the spectrum. The primary ways we monitor the flares are in X-rays and in optical light. Flares are also sites where particles, electrons, photons, and heavier particles are accelerated. We also have what are called coronal mass ejections, suddenly and violently release bubbles of gas and magnetic fields. These will impact any planet or spacecraft in its path. They are associated with flares, but they can also occur independently. And again, this, this matter, um, it releases uh, billions, a billion ton tons of matter that can be accelerated to several million miles per hour. So very dangerous for anything that's in its path. And here are some images of those coronal mass um, ejections, the CMEs. We also have features called coronal holes. Um, they are variable solar features that can last for weeks to months. They are large dark areas representing regions of lower coronal density when the sun is viewed in uh, EUV or X-ray wavelengths, sometimes as large as a quarter of the sun's surface. These holes are rooted in large cells of unipolar magnetic fields on the sun's surface. Their field lines extend far out into the solar, into the solar system. Uh, these open field lines allow a continuous outflow of high-speed solar wind. Coronal holes tend to be the most numerous in the years following solar maximum. Uh, does all solar impact activity impact the Earth? Why or why not? A lot of it has to do with alignment and where the sun or that, um, that event is taking place. Keep in mind that we are that we have a, a, an elliptical plane that we are in. Um, so if that is pointed in the opposite direction or if it's pointed just a few degrees um, above or below us, kind of relative terms, then they, those um, solar weather, solar storms won't impact us. And also there's the intensity factor. So even if they are pointing at us, if it's not a high enough intensity, our magnetic um, field will protect us to some degree. Here we've got a, a diagram showing some of the possible uh, side effects though of these um, solar storms. We've got um, spacecraft that can be damaged, the electronics. We have solar flares um, and the protons that can affect things like GPS uh, signals. Um, radio, or I'm sorry, radiation can have an effect on uh, airplanes and of course GPS can affect all sorts of things from tractors, cars, and trucks. 
Um, and then we've also got geomagnetically induced current and power systems. So the electrical grid can literally be um, have power surges in it from some of these massive storms. All right, that concludes our lesson about identifying some of the key features and solar events. If you have questions, as always, please ask.